Hey Jaycationers, welcome to my latest edition of the Jaycation Travel Guide, Jaycation Accommodations. Today we're going to talk about useful tips when booking accommodations online before your trip. First off, you want to know how long your trip is, whether it's a week, two weeks, a month, a year, you're going to want a budget for how long your trip's going to be. And once you know what your budget is, you can then go on and figure out what you're going to book. For today's post, we're going to focus on three options. Uh, the first being a hotel, second being an Airbnb, and the third a hostel. Personally, I like to mix it up. I like to meet new people, but I also like to have privacy. So there will be times where I stay in a hostel for two or three nights, go out on adventures with my new friends, and then after that, I book a hotel and have my own privacy and get to relax and have a good night's sleep. Because face it, when you're in hostels, you're sleeping with three or four other people in the same room, and sometimes it's uncomfortable to get a good night's sleep. So first, let's talk about hotels. Girl, won't you come to my hotel? First off, when you're booking hotels online, you want to go on Kayak, TripAdvisor, and Priceline. Those are the three best search engines. The number one search engine to look for the best prices in hotels is Kayak, obviously, because they link to all the other search engines. With comparing prices in Kayak, Priceline, and even the hotel's own website, you can find the cheapest option and book it from there. Personally, I like to use Priceline a lot because on Priceline you could do your name your own price or even book an express deal. Priceline express deals sometimes are a great option. Although it doesn't tell you the hotel name in advance, it'll tell you the area and how many stars it's ranked. When booking these hotels online, like on Kayak, um, you want to make sure that the taxes and everything else is included, hotel fees and whatnot. Because sometimes they just post the base price of the hotel and then when you go to check out, um, it's like $40, $50 more because of the taxes and the hotel fees. In most cases, booking directly through the hotel website isn't the cheapest way to go, but sometimes it is. What's up, Jaycationers? We are in Valencia, Spain, leaving my hotel. Really clean hotel, look at this. Um, got it only for 30 Euro, 32 Euro, um, and it was, it was an EB's hotel. So it doesn't hurt to go on there to confirm that the cheapest price isn't on that website. What are some advantages of staying in a hotel? Well, first off, you get privacy. You get a nice, quiet night's sleep, and you can do whatever you want and relax. Sometimes these hotels have gyms, and when you're on vacation for two to four weeks, um, it's hard to get a workout in, and you wanna take advantage of this amenity. Some hotels grant you access to Wi-Fi in the lobbies. Some hotels give you free access in rooms. Um, you might want to check in advance to make sure and confirm through places like TripAdvisor on reviews if Wi-Fi is offered throughout the hotel or in certain places. If you're looking for the best rate possible, it wouldn't also hurt to call the hotel and make sure because sometimes they just want to sell rooms and sell them on the cheap. So calling them sometimes might be a nice bargaining option for you to get a discounted rate. The second option we're going to talk about today is booking an Airbnb. So in order to book through Airbnb, you have to have an Airbnb account, which you can create online and they'll verify your picture, verify your information. And once it's all set and ready to go, they'll let you uh, start booking. My number one tip when booking through Airbnb is to look at the reviews. I never book Airbnbs without any reviews. If a place and a host has 20 or more reviews and they're all awesome, Chances are this is a great place to stay and I would definitely reach out to that host and check it out. Although Airbnb gives you a chance to instantly book some of these places, some places you have to talk to the owner so they get to know you a little bit and make sure that you're a nice person and whatnot. So when communicating with these hosts, be as nice and polite as possible, show a little bit of personality. When you're staying at their place, respect it. Clean up after yourselves. It's not a hotel. You're staying at somebody else's house. Give them the respect that they deserve and clean things, put things where they belong, and just be a respectful person. Other options on Airbnb is you could either rent the entire place itself or you can just rent a private room. When renting a private room, other people are staying with you in the same property and most likely the host is there too. When booking the entire place, you may meet the owner ahead of time to get the keys and get instructions and whatnot, but you have the entire place to yourself. Hey everybody, so it's our last night here in Nice. Um, just want to give you a tour of our Airbnb our balcony from the bedroom it's about five blocks from the beach another great thing about airbnb is that a lot of these hosts are really hospitable just like when i went to barcelona for the first time and i met antoni who was really nice and gracious enough to pick me and my friends up at the airport and take us to the airbnb 
that is going above and beyond the call of duty and it's great that there's people out there like that that want to take care of you and show you around other advantages and amenities you want to check out on airbnb is seeing if these places have wi-fi have washers and dryers have patios have air conditioning anything you need or could possibly want in your stay um, it's all listed the third option i want to talk about today is staying in hostels Hostels usually are for the younger crowd from the ages 18 to 35. Now if you don't need complete privacy and you do want to meet new people, this is a great option for you. If it's just you or another person or you're traveling with friends, this is a great place to go. But if you're with your family or if you're older and you're with your wife or your girlfriend, you might want to stay in a hotel or an Airbnb. Check out Hostel World, TripAdvisor and Google to see the best reviews of the hostel in your area and make sure it fits to your liking. For me, I don't stay at a hostel that's reviewed badly because I want to make sure I'm secure. So most hostels give you a variety of combinations. You could stay anywhere from a private room with one other person or yourself, you just got to pay extra. Or you could stay in a dorm room with four to six people on bunk beds. Some hostels even have places that fit up to 16 to 20 people in one room. For me, I like to stay in a hostel with about four to six people. Um, it's a little more intimate. You get to know the people in your room a little more. Uh, basically we're on the river of Sevilla. Um, we're about to cross, watch the USA game, and uh, check out some of the nightlife. Like I said, the number one thing when staying in a hostel is cleanliness and security. When looking for a hostel, make sure these places have lockers. Bring your own lock. Also, you're going to want to check if there's Wi-Fi in the rooms and the communal area because most likely your phone's not working in these international places. So Jcationers, that was only three options that I gave you, but there are other options out there, but that's what I wanted to focus on today. Other accommodation options obviously are finding friends and family who live in those cities. And if you find them, that would be even better. You save money because most likely it's free and you just have to take them to dinner or lunch or whatnot. I can't grasp the idea of couch surfing, but some people can. So if that's what they want to do, go ahead and do it. Next up, I'm going to talk about souvenirs. I like to collect Starbucks mugs, so I try to make sure that I have enough weight and enough space to bring these back home with me. We'll talk about finding souvenirs that will serve as great mementos that will remind you of a great time in your life when you were out exploring the world, out adventuring. Finally, Jcationers, thanks for all your support. Please comment, like on the box below, and if you haven't already, come on, you gotta subscribe, hook me up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. We'll be talking about souvenirs. Let's go. Hi, Jcationers. Welcome to Jcation Travel Planning. This video is the first of many features where I'm going to start doling out.